Good morning, my friends. I hope we're doing absolutely fantastic today. And today we're gonna be discussing Instagram and uh, my export settings, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video because you do actually have to know all this stuff within your camera. And it's not just applicable to the Sony camera, it's applicable to any camera. And you must know this before you actually start recording. And then this will actually help you in the IG export settings. But I wanna talk about the a7 IV and filming in 1080p because there is a few questions that I actually had. I did put a poll on my Instagram so you can jump over there and I do some polls from here and there. And I showed some footage with the a7 IV and shooting at 100 frames per second because we know that the a7 IV doesn't have 4K at 100 frames per second. And I wanted to show how good this would actually look on Instagram and uh, the differences between 4K and 1080p with this kind of compression. But it does have 1080 and it does have 10 bit, which is really cool, especially because the a7 III has very similar, but it doesn't have 10 bit. So color grading is a little bit difficult when you are shooting S-Log3, which I shoot S-Log3 and uh, color grading with my LUTs and that's how I get some pretty nice colors. I mean, color grading subjective. I think it's nice. So. <laughs> but uh, there is one thing that I wanna talk about with the a7 IV and is that a lot of actually my top end client work, I still produce in 1080p. Now, a lot of people are thinking that the a7 IV is oversampled when it comes to 1080p and I, don't, don't quote me, don't quote me on this, but I don't think it actually is oversampled. I think it is just a one-to-one -one readout of the sensor when it comes to 1080p because it doesn't seem any sharper than the FX3. It doesn't seem any sharper than the FX30, the brand new FX30. And uh, actually the FX6 actually looks better in 1080p than the a7 IV because obviously FX6 is a broadcast uh, documentary cinema camera. I think they optimize that 1080p because 1080p is still very widely used in the professional realm when it comes to the export settings. Now, when it comes to the a7 IV, you're still going to get incredible looking images when it comes to the 1080p. There is absolutely nothing wrong with filming in 1080p. It really depends on who you're actually delivering this to. If you're going to be uploading this to YouTube, you could probably still get away with using 1080p and upscaling it to 4K because unfortunately, YouTube does actually uh, prioritize 4K videos over 1080p videos. But that is just what I've heard and that's just what a lot of other people are saying. I don't know if this is 110% actually the truth but uh, a lot of people tend to upload in 4K and I think, you know, it does make sense. YouTube want to prioritize higher quality videos and they assume quality 4K is going to be obviously all the good creators. But yeah, still having a 1080p timeline and just obviously exporting it in 4K can still be very beneficial. But when it comes to Instagram, if you upload in 4K, it's actually going to compress it and make it look absolutely terrible. Now, my Instagram settings, I actually edit in a 1080p timeline or a 2K timeline. So it's 1080 by 1920. So it's a nine by 16. And essentially that's your 1080p in nine by 16. Whereas your, uh, I think 4K in nine by 16 would be the reverse of 3840 by uh, 2160, so it'd be 2160 by 3840. So that's your 4K 9 by 16. So do not do that. If you do that in that timeline, export into 1080p, a 1080 by 1920. This is going to uh, be less compressed when it comes to Instagram's algorithm. So absolutely upload in 1080p. Now, when it comes to bit rates, it really depends. I personally just leave it to high bit rate and that's enough. I don't know, this is completely anecdotal results. This is just what I do when it comes to uploading on Instagram. You just have to make sure you turn to upload high quality videos on your settings in Instagram. So that is a definite when it comes to this. But uh, even before when I started playing around with that, months and months and months ago, I was still doing the 1080p footage and just uploading it directly there. It wasn't compressing it. So just make sure you upload in 1080p. 
Okay, so now one of the biggest recommendations I could probably give you is actually record everything in 4K resolution or the highest resolution you actually have. Now you do have a 1080p timeline, but I do recommend if you have the highest quality video possible and you squeeze it into that 1080p timeline, you're gonna get so much more image quality, so much more resolution that you're actually gonna be compressing it. If there's noise in the image and you're compressing a 4K image or an 8K or 6K image into that 1080p timeline, it's not gonna be noticeable. It's gonna be cleaner, it's gonna look sharper, more resolution, more detail. Overall, it's just gonna look so much better. So I actually record everything as best as possible in 4 Okay, now I did say 1080p is obviously still perfectly fine and still the export in 1080p, but if you do have 4K, absolutely utilize 4K because if you do put it into that 1080p timeline, if you are shooting in portrait 9x16, 4K, you need to obviously squeeze it by 50%. So you're gonna bring it down, you know, half the size and it's going to look so much cleaner. Trust me, I do this with pretty much every single one of my reels and it comes out absolutely crisp. So this is probably the biggest uh, advice that I could give you right now. Film the highest resolution in your camera and you're going to get much better. Sure, you can still film in 1080p, nothing wrong with that. It just won't look as detailed and as crisp as a 4K squeezed in to a 1080p timeline. So hopefully this helped you in creating obviously better quality content for Instagram that it's not gonna get compressed and lost in the algorithm, but I really hope this helps and just apply it. Try it out and try a whole bunch of new things when it comes to creating content as well. I know Instagram are pushing reels a lot, but don't worry, photography is still there. They're still pushing photography. You just have to think outside the box and have you know slightly different content than other people because there are so many people with similar content these days, but Follow the trends. I've got a whole video talking about trends and how to grow on Instagram as well. But you know, I've grown from 5,000 all the way up to 184,000 at the time that you're watching this video. So it helps me and I hope it helps you. But if you do want to support my channel, the links will be in the description below for my LUTs and you can buy me a coffee. You can do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call as well, which you can buy a few packages so you can have longer Zoom calls as opposed to just a quick 20 minute one but they are tailored, customed, designed to you as well. But, you know, I talk in these Zoom calls all about, you know, Instagram strategies, business strategies, professional content, and just, you know, looking at your work and critiquing it and giving my best opinion possible. But yeah, th that's how you can support me. And obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel is ready or jump over to my Instagram and give me a follow. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.